Yo, welcome Yo. to a podcast on location. On location. We can't say the location. But we but say it's a lake. It is no, a lake. Know. We're allowed to say that. We checked. <laughs> the lawyer said that's okay. Our so. lawyer, Murray. It's the only name I can give you. That's right. He's oh, a good Murray. guy. He's a great lawyer. His, his, Murray's knowledge is deep as a lake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could call this his lake. You could call this if you Murray's to, lake. If you wanted to call it that, you could. You could call it Lake Murray. You yeah, know, whatever if, you, if you like it. him that much, you could. Uh, Anyways, I don't normally embrace the outdoors, but Sean's always telling me to. So, just like him, I, I'm sporting the Padre cap. He's today. trying to become more like me. Yeah. Uh, who's the Who's Sean Chatfield? Freeze frame that and uh, send your best guess. Podcast at mega64.com. Who wore Try it to best? Guess who, yeah, who, who, wore who, best. Wore, who wore it best? I'm Get, gonna have to go with Sean on this. Uh, one. Thank you. Uh, email yeah. us what you think. Let the oh, viewers yeah. pick. Anyway, podcast number three. I think it's four forty. Three. Four, four, three. Four, 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 four. This is our E3 extravaganza. We wanted to get away from all the technology. We wanted to go yeah. as far away from a video game as we could possibly get. And as yeah. far away from downtown LA as possible. Yes, yes, we are at the furthest point from LA. No travel. Uh, you would think that would be New Zealand. No, it's uh, this lake, which we cannot name. Thank you, Murray. But it's a very deep lake, so if you go to the bottom of it, then yeah. You're then right. you're good. Yeah. Then you're good. It goes all the way to China. Uh-oh. I don't know what that means. Is that uh, that could have been racist? No, you can let us know. That's podcast. Not Eric could have pressed the button. Every kid ever has dug a hole trying to get to China. That's not mentioning a racist mentioning thing. China in any humorous way. I, is that's that, racist. You can't they even can do get that us. anymore. They could get us. Oh man, China okay. is a world superpower. They're a global power. Yeah, they don't have to tolerate you our know, shit. You think that when they dig holes to try and get to America, you think they do that? Over there? No. When yeah, they, was that a gag there? When, when they dig holes, it's like a forced labor type of thing. Oh, I wasn't going to go that dark with it. I was just... Uh, bing, 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 What was that? Was it? Is, is that Seinfeld? Oh, is no. It, oh, is it racist? Yeah. Same thing. Well, welcome. Was Seinfeld racist? Oh, he was racist. What percentage? Not, not 25? Jerry, but uh, Kramer. He's not... <laughs> yeah. Jerry's racist, too. He didn't want to hug Kesha because yeah. she was the wrong... God, that was... She, she like, wasn't... I know that's old she wasn't news now, but God, that yeah, was Yeah, she wasn't New Yorker enough <laughs> she for him. She didn't have as many Porsches. God, that theme song. Oh, man. What? Oh, you did a theme song? I covertly slipped theme song in there. Okay. You know what? Fuck right, it. Are, no, you put, are you gonna put a theme song? You know what? In this? No theme song this week. Okay. It's like this is like that Jay Z song. It's I don't. Like, I don't need no hook for this shit. Again, unlo- this is uh, Mega sixty four unplugged. Yeah. Yep. Unlike E three, we're not gonna edit this. We're yeah. just gonna throw it up. And yeah. It's gonna be raw. This yeah. music is not for commercial we're, release. Believe it or not, there's no teleprompter. So. <laughs> no prompter. No bells and whistles. Um, yo, E3. what's up? We're, I mean, we kind of covered in Microsoft last. You guys did at least. Yeah, we did one. a couple streams. I streamed during Microsoft and I streamed during Sony, right. but not during Nintendo's thing. So sure. I never talked about that. Yeah. So real quick, real fast recap on the other ones. Yeah. So uh, you know, E3 big thing this year. I thought I thought overall, um, a good a good E3 for like the few things I was hoping they announced that were familiar. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I said on a previous podcast, you know. We all, I think we all agree, some new stuff, some brave choices, some brave risks are really what was all, you know, obviously you want that. Right. In terms of the familiar, I said, well, if it's something familiar, I want a new Metroid. And not only did I get a new Metroid Prime, uh-huh. there's a new 2D Metroid coming out. Damn. So there are two Metroids, one this year and one whenever the hell the other one comes out. Right. So... Very happy about that. Not so happy on the rest in turn. Outside of like Nintendo's familiar things that they seem to be doing very good, it was disappointing E3 in terms of like, show me a brave new thing. Right. You know what I mean? Well, I was saying this during our we did our Sony keynote uh, stream. I really besides the sitar thing, which is weird. I don't know why that. <laughs> well, Sony's art, so they have to go all I out guess with so. their, yep. I guess have so. their presentations. But. I really liked, they didn't have much to show, but they didn't waste my time with yeah. that. And they just yeah. showed trailer, 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 gameplay, trailer, 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 walked off, and that was it. Like, I liked that. You know what? You know what, though? This is hard for hard to say. I feel like, though, it, hmm. it's funny, because that's kind of what Nintendo's was. Yes. But Nintendo's, I thought, worked better. Because Nintendo, it was like they came out and gave a better con- I, I would context agree with that. for all of it. They, you know, they came out and kind of just set it all up. Like, here's kind of our angle today, and we're only focusing on Switch. Sony's was, I, I honestly think they could have struck a better balance. It was kind of weirdly, yeah, alien. We kept it was asking, like, like, is this VR? Is it not VR? We yeah, weren't really it, sure. Yeah, I kind of was like, I was ready for someone to come out and say a couple things. 
Yeah. But but at the same time, I don't like when they waste a bunch of bullshit time either. I don't like, like when they. I'll never you know. get over that one E three when they showed it for the first time and they had that girl talking to Skittles. The, the yeah, tiger. for like an hour. Yeah. It was like this is unbearable. Yeah. So at least we didn't get anything like that. I can't quite place what the difference was, but something was different. But anyway. Um, Honestly, though, the best thing I saw, which is a uh, remake, was Shadow of the Colossus. To me, like that—that yeah. uh, that was the one thing I got the most excited about, which is funny. But yeah, but you know, I have to say now, when now, a big thing people were looking forward to for a long time was Final Fantasy VII remake, and I was on that side because right. that is a game that, um, you know, the original is always there, and I'm always going to recommend people play the original. But that was a game that had such a incredible story with amazing characters and it did it was really held back by the technology of that time like some people who try to play it today can't even make sense of some of the things they're seeing so yeah seeing it with today's graphics is kind of cool i'm not necessarily looking for a remake to replace the old one but it's kind of neat seeing it in a modern visual sense right but you know i'm shadow of the colossus one of my favorite games of all time I didn't feel like it needed that. Like, like I'm. Don't get me wrong. I'm. I'm very surprised by it. I thought it looked really neat, but I feel like they, the, their visual language already came across. And like, they already have the remaster. Yeah, and it, you know, it was sure. a little, it was jittery on PS2, but then they ported it to PS3 and it was smooth. I kind of feel like that game is already still a work of art. It doesn't really have anything that doesn't read. Yeah, I guess if they would put the same game on PS4, I would be just as happy as this remake. Yeah. But I am really excited, really excited for it. So. Yeah, I, 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 so I don't know. It was, it was weird because I'm, I am a fan and I will play that, that, but I didn't feel like we needed it. Like, I just, I was kind of like, oh, that's random. But um, Sony's thing in general was kind of stuff that I already knew I was into, you know. God of War and and the new God of War looked great last year. I didn't feel like I saw anything this year that took it to another level. I'm like, yep, I'm waiting for that. Yeah. We saw more of the new Spider-Man by Insomniac, which normally I wouldn't care about a superhero game, but Insomniac's a great developer. I thought that I thought the Spider-Man game looked pretty cool, pretty but cool. I'm just waiting for that to come out and get reviews and see how it is, you know. I don't know. It was well, fine, but it wasn't really that Well, you went to E3. Yeah. Was I mean was it just as underwhelming as it no, was? No, I mean it was the same. It was the same stuff that you saw at those at the keynotes. You know, it was okay. really uh, uh, Microsoft thing to me blew my mind the most because uh, they hyped up this Scorpio system a year ago. Like for a whole year, they talked about we've got the most powerful console ever made, and we're gonna lift the veil off of it next year. And they did it, and it's almost like we knew what it was last year. Like, right. it was, they came out again and said, this is the most powerful console ever. But the game situation has not changed. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, here's some third-party stuff that will also be on PS4. You know, like, it, it was like, uh, all right, I I knew you'd get these. You know, and right after, so they showed, uh, we were talking the other day about Crackdown. Mm -hmm. you, played, oh, yeah. you played the original Crackdown. They show Crackdown 3, and they go, this is, the, <laughs> this is a game that launches with the, the Xbox One X, this new, you know, whatever. And it looks like the old one. And they, Jeff Keighley brought them on, on a, to do a demo. Right. And he's like, wow, so this is on Xbox One X. So, you know, 60 frames a second. Now nah, it's going to be 30. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> you just gave us this whole conference on how this is. I, now, I'm not one to care about frame rates and shit like that. I really don't. But I just don't understand. Like, did they, did they give a reason that I you pay 500 with, bucks? With, like, with Crackdown 3 specifically, originally when Crackdown 3 was, annou uh, was announced, they yeah. said the power of the cloud, we're going to do crazy shit with physics you've never seen before, yeah. that's not in there anymore. Yeah. They like, I think it was in development hell or whatever, or they completely changed direction with the Xbox, yeah. with all that stuff. And so with Crackdown 3, it looks like a straight sequel on 360 hardware. Yeah. So I feel like oh that game was God. in development hell, they rebooted it, and now here's a quiet release I of it. I just feel like, who who's buying this? But yeah. they, they showed the system, and the first thing it shows Minecraft? Like, 4K. It, hey, Minecraft that's 4K. Exactly, what? That's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, what games make it so this is worth it? I don't, I, I don't... I saw an interview with Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, and he said, like, they have started to lock down development deals, but you won't see stuff for, like, two to three years. Well, then so they're what? still behind on yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, now, granted, the PS4 Pro announcement wasn't that enthusiastic either. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. Okay, if you got a 4K TV, it plays in 4K. And same with this new Xbox. But I just didn't think... I, I don't know. I just didn't think there was anything compelling to... You know, even with the PS4 Pro, they gave you something. It mm -hmm. was like, hey, VR games are going to run a little bit smoother. And, and you know, whatever. Like, there, at least there's VR and all this other stuff. I, with the Xbox, I just don't... I, I didn't see anything that compelled me, personally. Did you? Um, were you able to play Mario Odyssey at E3? Uh, Mario was there. I was not 
willing to wait for that. Oh, I just yeah. had no desire. But I'll give it to I will hand it to Nintendo that their booth. Yeah, that was cool. Unlike last year when they did the Breath of the Wild presentation, their booth was like walled off. Like right. what is the fucking point? You had point to wait hours that? to get in. Uh, this new one, it was like a Disneyland attraction. You, you walked walk in, in, it was yeah. it was New Donk City. It was like you're in New Donk City. Oh, you're there. And uh, there was tons of stuff to look at even if you weren't waiting for the game. Mm. So uh, we got to I watched a ton of different demos of it playing it and every uh, at every location and it looked really great uh but like i'm ready for that i'm ready to play i don't need to wait for that i'm, I'm ready uh the one game that i did play that i just wanted to say that i didn't i hadn't played that i wanted to try and luckily we were given the chance to was oh, yeah. dragon ball fighter is it dragon ball fighters i think dragon ball fighters Z. fighter z or dragon ball fighters spelled with, really a z. Cool with a z one of the two either way uh they were nice enough to let us play that and uh that game was incredible that game was incredible. <laughs> Every move, it's a fighting game. It looks like the hand-drawn animation, but it's all 3D in yeah. 3D. And every move was iconic from the show. Every single thing. Freeze's grab was, hit, you know, him doing that. That's how that's how Krillin dies. You know, every move was like from something. Spoiler. Yeah, great. Now so, I know that sorry. happens. Well, these guys who are watching this, they've probably seen all our videos and they, you saw me die. That was Krillin. Oh, love... you were Krillin? I was Krillin. <laughs> now you spoiled it again. Great. Spoiled our video. The they like they about... probably already saw your review of Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I was on the Bandai channel. They did. They recorded my reaction. A uh, little bit confusing. Didn't yeah. really understand what you were going for with that one. Oh, God. They recorded my... Re as soon as I was done playing the demo, they recorded me for the Bandai Namco YouTube channel. And I said... I flubbed the line. I came out and I said, it's a game that perfectly replicates the game. Uh, and then I, I meant to say show, that yeah, it replicates a show. So I immediately stopped and did another take. And yeah. they didn't use the other take. They used are you the serious? First one. Yeah. So all the comments are like, a game replicates the game? I, I caught it, and I, that's on that. Hey, that editor's on a crunch time. You know what? He doesn't care. You know, he yeah, probably he just wants know. the raw He probably reaction. was like, oh, this is Rocco? Fuck he doesn't this want guy. The, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make it look stupid. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually the most logical I will say one thing really cool about the Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, I haven't played any of the other like Arc System Work games, like yeah. Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear, whatever they do. I don't know. Um, there'll be angry anime comments. Uh, but, um, anime comments, look out! Um, I love the how. Yeah, it's a two. It's a two D fighting game, but like set in the three D space. So you'll do a grab or a move, and the camera will come in and, and like zoom in, and you'll see a different angle, and you'll see the crowd and everything, and like the fluidity of the camera and everything yeah. is like unreal. I haven't seen anything like that. Before. Yeah, it's super. super so cool. it was great. So, uh, oh yeah, honestly, uh, that's really the main one I wanted to talk about. But but in terms of just announcements. Uh, of familiar stuff. I mean, yeah, Mario looked incredible. That trailer somehow topped the first one. Like that, I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's coming I wasn't out in October. Aware that you putting the hat on things means you can control that thing. Yeah, I that's mean, a new, totally yeah, new, new thing. That that was cool. Yeah, so, which is great because the game already looked exactly what I wanted. The original announcement, yeah. like last year, like oh, perfect. And then they last minute they dropped this. And yeah, like the Mario's possession abilities. Yeah. So uh, that was that was great. Pazuzu Mario. Pazuzu <laughs> Mario. Bowser, then what happens? What's that? Oh, oh, identity crisis. That's probably the ending. That's probably the ending. Yeah. Uh, Don't spoil it. Uh, sorry, sorry, guys. It's supposed to game. Um, uh, yeah. So that was really cool. One thing cool that Microsoft did announce is Xbox backwards compatibility. Uh, that's yeah. not coming out till the end of the year, but I'm excited for that. And that. At every one of Microsoft's keynotes gets the biggest applause, but I'm like, I, I don't know, it's like not a new thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Backwards compatibility is a thing systems should have. I just want. So I think to, it's great. I but just want like, them to keep putting pressure so Sony will do something or step them up because like you still yeah. can't play, play like PlayStation games on PS4. Yeah. Which take nothing to emulate. Yeah. So. Which they made a comment recently that was like, People we looked at our old that. games and ooh, they don't look good. Yeah. It's like, so like, that that is so not the issue here, right. you know. So anyway. But, uh, but yeah, Nintendo had a lot of exciting, for what I wanted, they had yeah. exciting stuff. Uh, but, you know, otherwise, it was whatever. Yeah. Was Sony has Hot Shots Golf, Everybody's Golf, that's coming out. And then uh, Microsoft, the cool thing, they announced Cuphead's release date finally after like five years. Well, yeah, after it? like ten years of hearing about Cuphead. I think it's like end of September. Oh, that's soon. it. Yeah. But I'll get that on Steam on PC, yeah. not the Xbox One. Oh, Three you. months away. Yeah, I'm, yep. getting, I'm getting ready. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, those are, those are really the, the main things, I think. Yeah. Nintendo dropped it. They have a mainline Pokemon game coming yeah. to the yeah. Switch. It was a very quiet announcement of, so, of an announcement of someone working at a desk yeah. looking at the camera. It's, it's being That's worked a, on. That's a very Nintendo <laughs> yeah. thing. A new Pokemon game being on the Switch is yeah. awesome. I, I haven't played one since Red and Blue. But it being on a main console yeah. and becoming a portable, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's like, cool. I'll, I'll check that out, you know. So anyway, yeah, that's that. Yeah. Well, I uh, can now talk that I played ARMS. I 
could have last week, but I wasn't here. Yeah. Um, my review is pretty much the same as Rocco's, though. Like, it, my kids think it's awesome. I don't really care for it. It's a, it's a, another fighting game, but it's like the gimmick is kind of funny with yeah. the arms, and you can like choose having like missile arms or chainsaw arms or whatever you want to have. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's just not my. Is there any movie. like what's the what's like the packaging of the game? Is there any like story is there like no. a progression at all is it just here's a serena and fight yeah uh, it, yeah, it, it, well, I mean, yeah. There's, there's a single player mode that you progress through and sure but it, it's the same kind of like you know, street fighter it's like, yeah they have a story mode there's like, like bonus stages yeah and, yeah and yeah stuff. but it's not it's not like it's like a real did story. you guys hear about the arms tournament at e3 no anybody they had an arms fighting tournament at E3, and the winner got to play the producer of arms. <laughs> I did hear about that, yeah. Who then destroyed yeah. the guy in like two seconds, which is unfair, but is <laughs> almost, you know, very akin to what a video game fighting yeah. tournament would be like, where the, you know, the main yeah. boss is impossible to yeah. beat. Right, yeah. right, right. That's um, the Mike Tyson of the game. It just feels like a total bitch slap to that kid, though. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> oh, congratulations on winning the tournament. Now play the guy who made the game. You died. That's and uh, guy's also been playing that game for years, whereas this kid just had it in his hand. No, for, exactly. You know, this guy yeah. wrote the code for the <laughs> game. He knows the perfect timing. Right. He knows everything Maybe, about like, it. Maybe like the tournament is just so this guy can find a friend. You know, yeah. like he's just dying Maybe. to play someone on the same level. They should have had him. That's go like step into the matrix and fight Neo. Yeah. Well, <laughs> st start me off with somebody smaller. They should have had him go against Reggie or something like where he's yeah. close enough yeah. right. that he probably that he might know it, but he didn't develop it. Right. You know. So, uh, yeah, that's unfair. Kind of well, I mean, cool prize. we'll sort out the tournament next year. We'll what a it cool prize. Nintendo leaves a bitter taste in the, your mouth at the end of a tournament. <laughs> so it's you really builds you up to knock yeah. you down. So the kid will buy the game and train. Yeah. That's yeah. what he has to do. Yeah. I, I thought that was a, funny. Yeah, it's funny. I think it's a great $30 game for 60 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. For me. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's kind of how I felt. Well, like that, okay. that sums up all oh, console a lot, games. A lot of games, yeah. All console games nowadays. Sure. Uh, you've been playing Tekken 7. Yeah, I got Tekken 7 when it came out. Um, I got it on PC. It's great. I haven't played Tekken... I played Tekken 6 a little bit, but, like, Tekken 3 and Tekken Tag were, like, my main Tekkens, like, over 10 years ago. Uh, Tekken 7's great. Unlike Street Fighter 5, there's a lot of content, like, tons of characters. There's, like, a basic arcade mode. There's treasure battle, so you just fight people and, like, get unlockables. The customization is really great. Like there, there's so much goofy stuff. It's you know it's very what, what oh you, yeah what I love customize. I mean like every every character you can customize. So like with martial law, I made him look like a kind of like a casino cowboy. He's got a flashy gold suit, a big cowboy hat. So when you go in play online against someone, whoever your opponent's totally thrown off by how fucking goofy and stupid you look. So, oh, psychological. Yeah, you do a lot. Of, yeah, I mean you can like dress people up like cowboys, bikinis, make them dress like sharks, nice. whatever goofy stuff you want. Uh, you know, can you just go straight up naked. You can't go naked, but you can go like like underwear or okay. bikini. Yeah, yeah, not yet. There'll be a day you can go naked. Yeah. The closest naked I've seen. Shut up about Tekken for a yeah. second. The closest naked I've seen in a game oh, so in a far. Game. So far. <laughs> I thought this was a real life story. No, I haven't made it that far yet. But in a game, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like Dead or Alive had some skimpy stuff. Yeah. But I think the worst so far, like in the oh come on department, mm -hmm. is still One Chanbara. Because okay, it had a the DLC DLC yeah. costume with she had two strawberries nice. and a banana. banana. <laughs> Ooh. A banana. That's it. Yeah. There's the like, banana like yeah. between her legs. Yeah. Where's the ice cream? So you can see her butt then. Oh yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. That was like okay guys. Like, what are we doing? What, what was that pack called? Fruity, fruit and fruit it's fun something, it's or something. I have, I have like the big fruit physical fun. box. Yeah. No. I, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> it's called dessert. This guy dessert can't. Special. This guy can't look at titles. Yeah. yeah. She's, 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 she's wearing two was, strawberries yeah, and a banana. Yeah. Who cares? I, I only, called. I only played it for the articles. Yeah. Um, uh, there was a short period of video games where they were embracing nudity. Yeah. But yeah, it didn't B, work. BMX triple X. Yeah. BM triple X. Yeah. BM triple X. BM triple X. They were, they were trying to fix. For whatever reason, the guy game, pornography, yeah. and video games. They game. tried. They figured, yeah. like, what are the two things guys like yeah. the most? It'll make a million dollars, but it yeah. didn't. Hey, it worked with Kojima when Metal Gear Solid 2 with uh, Raiden. Was Flip he around. naked? Yeah, he's, he's, he's naked at the end. Oh, yeah, the that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. So I, Kojima does that I got well. there. I remember that. Yeah. And when I say nudity, I know there's, like, actual nudity in, like, Grand Theft Auto and things like that, but I'm talking about, like, ridiculous mm -hmm. you know what i mean not just like oh god of war sex scene i'm talking like come on guys yeah that's what i mean i want to see Special, more of that yeah more of that 
<laughs> More, is the on. next God of War going to do that now that it's like oh, sensitive? Got, you got to have sex scenes. Well, yeah. how does that? I wonder if it'll kid? be a sad. How does he get this? Kid? Yeah, it'll be a, yeah, it'll be a sad sex yeah. scene. Yeah. Like. You know what's funny about the God of War sex scene mm-hmm. controversy is God of War is a game where he's stabbing people in the mouth and like crushing people's heads with his bare hands, but oh, he had sex. Ah, that's too much. That's you yeah. know, kids are playing that's, this. That's always how it is. Of course. That's totally, I hate it. It's, a, it's okay to stab somebody in the eyes with a hot iron knife. It's the same thing that uh, Game of Thrones gets in trouble with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. George R.R. Martin talks about it. You know, people's ethics with these video games are so fucked up. You know, as soon as the god of war becomes the god of love, for half a second, yeah. there's controversy. I mean, I'll still... I, I've mentioned it before that I sat through... I sat through uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yo. Horrific sexual assault oh, yeah. and, that was, and, and that all kinds so of stuff. Really rough Terrible. material in that movie and, and violence and everything. And then when two chicks were, like, making out, a guy took his kids out of the theater. You, know, <laughs> I can't, like, you suddenly realize there were children in the theater yeah. because they were leaving. It was like... Oh, no, I was watching the whole time. It was funny. I'm sure uh, it was. But uh, anyway, yeah. But anyway, so... Yeah, that's that's the way it is. Um, anyway, Tekken. Going back to Tekken. Good game. Man, yeah. I played Tek- Tekken 3 yeah. was an obsession. That was one game that I 100%ed every single nook and cranny of it. I saved up and got it. Uh, no, I, I won a speech contest in 8th grade and bought it with my own money. That was a big deal. Yeah. And uh, and I played that the entire summer. And I've never gone back to Tekken after yeah. that. Well, that's what's cool is, like, jumping back into Tekken 7, I remember all the crazy combos, the Tenet combos, oh, nice. and you can just jump back into it. And again, with the customization, is like, you can unlock, like, their old Tekken outfits, so you can dress, it's, it's just playing dress up with my old friends, you know? Yeah. So I, I like I Tekken love 7. I that. Nice. Okay. It's part Fuck. fighting game, part dress up. Yeah. I love that. Uh, Tekken 7 looks really interesting to me. I haven't played Tekken since Tekken 2, which was a launch title on PlayStation 1, I believe. Yeah. Was it a launch day game? It was early, either way. I don't know if it was launch, but when I got my PlayStation in seventh grade, that was like yeah. the big title. That was the yeah. I got that and Soviet Strike. Those oh, were the yeah. two games I got on my PlayStation, and Soviet Strike was not very good. Hey, my, my yeah. first two titles I got my first PlayStation games were Tekken Three and Blasto. Tekken Three was the good one. Yeah. Blasto sucked. Everybody I, gets a shit one. The <laughs> game I, I got a like a free game with mine, and it was what was it? Maybe people out there will know. I don't know the name of it. Where you were like four guys with explosives strapped to them, and you're in like a giant cube. And you're trying to get away from each other, and oh, then you blow and up. Box art, intelligent. Cube? Yeah, it was a guy. No, it was a guy going like that, and he had a he had a like bomb strapped to him. Bomb, I can't remember. Bomb boy, bomb man, bomb boy, man. Bomb uh, I can't remember. They're all in a cube, and they're trying not to blow up. Yeah. Each, I don't know. Suicide guy. Where's that Sony? Remaster? Suicide guys. Suicide That's yeah. a good name for a game. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. Yeah, that's cool. E3. So that that. What else is there to say about E3 then? I mean, not much. Like, a lot of it is stuff we're still waiting on, you know. The, in terms of, like, new franchises, I mean, we got one we one pirate game we already knew about. <laughs> yeah, and that, then another pirate game we didn't know about. I mean, that was, neither like, one of them looked fun to me. No, I didn't <laughs> think so funny, either. I, the, the trailer of that, was it Skull and Bones? Yeah. And those uh, Ubisoft's, yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah, I wa- oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I watched that trailer, and, like, it's funny because it was, like, the movie part of it. I'm like, oh, this looks kind of cool. All right, yeah. I'll play this. And the second it cuts to gameplay, I'm like, I'm, nope, no, never mind. Check yeah, it out. I was not Fuck into this. that. I want to pose a podcast question of the week. What was the greatest era for video games? Are we in the greatest era of video games right now? Constantly. I would, oh, that's my answer. <laughs> I think that, actually, you know, because I, I like to view things kind of in like a golden age mm. mentality. They say there's a golden age of video games. They say that we were just recently in the golden age of television. Some people say we still are. Golden age of comic books was years ago. I feel like the golden age of video games has just come to a close. Just within the last five years. And maybe I'm biased because, you know, I'm getting a little bit older and, you know, that old mentality of, eh, it's not as good as it used to be. But I feel like 2008, 2009, up until about 2011, 2012, you had all these good classic games coming out all of these new ips being introduced and now we're just getting like the fourth and fifth or sixth or seventh edition of those games and i feel like you know things have gone a little bit stagnant personally that's how i feel uh maybe others won't agree but i'm interested to see what people think i feel like it's cyclical i feel like uh because the era that you described is the end is like towards the end of that generation 
And I feel like that's when you get the best games. Yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, you were getting that towards the end. Like, PS2 was getting some of its biggest games. The, like, like the, towards the, the end. After PS3 was yeah, that. and I feel like we're getting better games now than when the PS4 came out. Yeah. Because, uh, honestly, when the PS4 came out, it was sad for a little yeah. while. Um, I feel like you're getting good stuff now. I mean, this year there's been like Breath of the Wild. I mean, personally, I love Neo and Nier. Like, there's, mm. there's the, the beginning of this year was packed. Uh, yeah. Resident I mean, Evil. yeah, yeah. Resident Evil Seven was great. Mario yeah. Odyssey's coming out. Like, there's yeah. constantly good shit. Yeah. And then on the indie side, it's easier than ever to make video games. There's tons of indie games. Tacoma's coming out soon, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, Wait, what, which one was that again? Tacoma. Yeah, to come from the that? developers of Gone Home, Gone Home, which is like oh, oh. I, I love Gone Home, and like here's their next game. I never played Gone. Um, well, I think indie games are better than ever. I think I'm talking about console. Oh, triple A, yeah, 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 yeah. Triple a. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've still, I mean, I've still, there's still been a, a lot of stuff I've really loved. Uh, but again, like, I feel like again when early early 360, yeah. I didn't feel like I had much to play. Yeah, you know, and then, and then they came like, along. The best stuff comes out at the end of a console. Well, the Wii. We're coming to the end of that life cycle. And now Xbox is announcing kind of, you know, another console. Xbox One went this whole time without really having a big collection of Smash hits. Sure. You know. But I just think the Xbox is not really... They never, they yeah, they never had it. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Totally yeah. Fucked it, they fucked it up. It's, there we go. They fucked it up. I, I, feel, I, like I feel like PS4 is doing great with all I, their Japanese I, I exclusives. Yeah. PS4 yeah. has been cool. Japan, yeah. I was talking to Rocco about this. Japan is killing it with yeah. video games and creativity. Uh, I think American games are kind of starting to resemble uh, Hollywood movies a little bit. Well, yeah. And how, I was just going to say, how, how arriving at that, it was funny because, yeah, Derek said that. He's like, I feel like games are just like replicating the movie industry right now. And let me just and explain I, what I meant by yeah. that. I feel like a few years ago there was a big news story. Yo, video games are the biggest money maker on earth. Oh, yeah, yeah. More than movies and music and television combined. Yeah. And suddenly all of these investors were like, really? <laughs> and, and since then, I feel like games have kind of played it safe, kind of uh, played it, you know, so that, you know, it's a guaranteed hit. We don't want to push the envelope too much. Let's do Assassin's Creed 4. Let's do Assassin's Creed 5. Yeah. And Call of Duty World War II? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and kind of the whole free spirit of video games, like, oh, I just want to blow everything out of the water. I want to push the envelope. I want to rip the envelope. That mentality has kind of been held back now when, yeah. you know, and I was telling Rocco, like, the new Battlefront, Star Wars, mm -hmm. they're saying that the story in this game is canon in the Star Wars universe. Well, that to me says, okay, so you literally have people from Hollywood working on these games now. And, mm -hmm. you know big producers are coming in and making sure that it all lines up with these big movies that they're making. And I don't know if that's the best thing for, you know, the creativity of video games. Yeah. Um, uh, but Japan is not... Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Oh, well, because I kind of rebought it. I was like, well, you know, I, th I still think there's a lot of games, at least, you know, from my perspective, there's a lot of games that are, you know, unlike movies, they can take risks. You know, yeah. Mario, you could do another Mario Brothers style game, but they're not. They're doing something that is expansive and vast and you know i'm playing i'm you know I, I saw people play the the mario odyssey and like they fell off a cliff and instead of dying they fell into a dark forest and they oh, were somewhere no. else oh, wow. and they you know what i mean like it kept going i'm like you know i don't know i think they're making great advances you know i played you know uh you know they could have played it safe with like xenoblade chronicles and the battle system could have been a common turn-based thing because that's safe but instead they changed it up and they you know so i'm like i don't know i think unlike unlike movies they can take they can take a well-known thing and still do something different. And then, yeah, Derek pointed out, you're talking about all Japanese games. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that is my interest. And Sony's Japanese, Japanese games. Yeah, yeah. So American, yeah, it's Microsoft, which is all their shit yeah. I don't care about. I don't care about Ubisoft or Activision or EA. Like, none of that stuff yeah. clicks with me. I mean, there's small things like South yeah. Park, one-off things. Yes. But yeah, generally, like, I don't care about Assassin's Creed. I don't care about whatever else, like car yeah. racing games yeah and then ea like it's battlefront battlefield i don't care about yeah yeah sony though i will say even even though they have games made in america per, you yeah. know whatever like uncharted there's still a mentality behind that yeah. company that i feel like they want to tell you a story you haven't heard because uncharted still takes risks yeah. and and you know uncharted 4 even didn't go necessarily somewhere i expected or maybe even wanted but it was still like wow they i they had guts to go the route they did yeah 
you know, I still feel like there's some, you know, maybe just inherently to them being a Japanese and company, they, and they there's also, some want to do that. They launched uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, like a new IP this, yeah. earlier this year, and that yeah, was like a totally. totally bold new uh, But But if you're looking at, but again, these are all things at, at its core, yeah. there's a Japanese company there. Yeah. Uh, so that might have some influence. But when you're looking at, yeah, the AAA multi-platform yeah. standards, yeah. it is exactly what you're talking about, you know? So I think it's just, yeah, it's like, what are you into? You know, it's... Yeah. Anyway. Uh, hey, let us know what you think. What yeah. was the greatest era of video games? Are we currently in the greatest era of video games? Yeah. Does it keep going up and up and up and better and better? Or are there peaks and valleys? Yeah. Uh, email us, podcasts at mega64.com. Let us know. Let us know. Uh, have you guys been watching any TV shows or any movies or anything yeah, like that? This video In terms shit. of TV, it's this constantly ongoing stuff. Like Silicon Valley is great. I like yes. it. Twin yeah. Peaks is great. I like it. Hands, Handmaid's Tale, I like it, but like hey, nothing like. I was gonna check that out. Is that good? I like it. Um, what? What? I said. It's it's like it's <laughs> a little bit like, I guess like a little slow, kind of like it's very atmospheric. Um, what channel is it on? Hulu. Oh, it's the, the Hulu yeah. channel. Yeah, <laughs> but like I never watched the Hulu cool. original show, but like this is actually cool. The way it's shot is really pretty. Um, it's based on like a sci-fi novel from the '80s, but it's like huh. adapted to more contemporary times. Uh, yeah, it's a cool show. I love like the main actress Elizabeth Moss from Mad Men. Like, oh yeah. So like it's just it's just a cool show. I dig it. Um, but again, it's not like gripping week to week. Silicon Valley though, like yeah, I love it. And that's what I wanted to go back real fast yeah. on Silicon Valley. Uh, we were just talking about this, but there is a beautiful moment <laughs> in it that maybe some people at home didn't appreciate. Yeah. But in this latest episode, episode they nine. exhibited at a convention. Won't won't go into any spoilers or anything. But in the first minute of the episode, they go to this convention. And I just wanted to say, you know, as exhibitors, we do a lot of conventions. We have a booth at all these different events. They perfectly summed up the feeling of going to your booth at a convention. When you walk up and every other booth looks ornate and amazing and someone screwed up and your booth only is an empty space with one table in it. And you walk up and go, oh, this is bullshit. <laughs> that, what the f- there's we only a table that situation so many did, hundreds of times. Did you ask for more more chairs? I, I thought <laughs> I did like that moment felt I was like there on the set with them. Like <laughs> someone on the writing team has exhibited at a convention. They watched us go to a convention. Yeah, before. they walked up and then and then they're all like and the main guy is like, who cares? Like we're just here to set up shop. Like who cares? All right, I guess who cares? Okay, you know, <laughs> you're supposed to have tables. You know, it's that yeah. moment of just like, you know, what do we do? Let's leave it. I don't want to leave it. You know, anyway, oh, that was beautiful. But yeah, that's a great show. I mean, nothing yeah. nothing new there. Yeah. Game of Thrones comes back in like a month. Less than a month. Um, I, I Real quick, I finished The Leftovers, and uh, Rocco kind of talked about it a little bit. But uh, the whole series, I thought, was great. And I think yeah, the way I that agree. it ended, I was, they made it like... They made it like an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Did not need to be that long. No, like, I, I, I agree. I, when I heard when that, I, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. When I saw that runtime, I thought, this is going to be an epic. This is going to be nuts. And then I was like, oh, it's a lot of bike riding. It yeah. It, w- it, was an in- it, was, <laughs> it really was It was an indulge, uh, indulging... M- for a show that was actually good about that stuff, yeah. it indulged in itself a little bit too yeah. much, I thought. And in I that thought last it was going to be the yeah, crazy epic thing, and it was the opposite. But I really liked it. And yes. the way that it ended, totally. as it, like, like the whole thing of being like, I'm not going to spoil anything, yeah. I guess. But like the way that it ended was like, I like that where it's like there's a conversation we had after that. Like, what what happened? Yeah, there? that was awesome. Yeah. I really like that. Uh, yeah. I think it's, I, I, I said this before, but it's kind of in a similar situation with Lost. Here's a lot of controversial stuff. Some will like and some won't. But I think everyone can agree on, like, the last moment. Yeah. You know, like, Jack closing the eye. Even if you didn't like the other stuff, it's pretty cool seeing him go back to the original spot and close the eye. You know, that this show had a great moment of just, like, okay, that was the perfect cap off to it. Uh, but there was other stuff. I still kind of wish it wrapped up a lot of other characters in more you know, more meaningful ways, kind there's of. Definitely, but, yeah, there is a way. But I also feel like we were lucky to get these episodes because HBO yeah, was going to cancel yeah. it and they gave them eight more just to be nice. Sure, yeah. so I'm not complaining. But it, but uh, now that it's over, that was a great show. I mean, that was like a really standout, neat show. And I'd recommend it to anybody. It's only, it's 28 episodes. It's barely longer than one ep- one season of Lost. Right. So, yeah. At least I, give it I, a I, shot. Yeah, give it a shot. You, I mean, you have nothing to lose. You'll, you'll be done with it very and, quick. And like, at least for me, I, th- I wasn't, like, fully hooked until, um, until like, maybe four episodes in. Like, for me, it started, like, okay. Yeah. But, s- see, even if you're not too hot on season one, season two was such a higher level. Totally. And it stays there. Totally. But uh, even season one, like, it's, it's I, I, I thought it was cool. Yeah. If you like Colts, like, yeah. it's good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Great uh, band. It is a good <laughs> band. Yeah. 
Um, I saw a couple movies over the week. Um, you know, I've been watching a lot of movies on Shudder, which I may have mentioned. I've been really yeah. brushing up on horror movies. It's funny because I kind of stopped watching Netflix. Uh, yeah, me, I've me been too. Really, yeah. really loving this horror streaming service. Um, but I did go out in theaters and I saw It Comes at Night. Uh, nobody, you saw that. Yeah, I liked it, yeah. I did not. <laughs> Let's have point counterpoint. <laughs> I thought it sucked. <laughs> Counterpoint? It's a small scale Sundance film. It's on the new wave of like, like I guess like the micro, like the psychological horror films like The Witch and like The Babadook. Not like I didn't like The Babadook that much, but like it's a small horror film. I've been reading like The Stand, so it fits right in line with like post-apocalyptic, really small scale stories. Like it felt like a chapter in, the, in that book. Um, again, I didn't love it. It's been getting like overwhelming. It's not. It's getting like really great reviews. I liked it. Um, it has a certified fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes of 86 and an audience rating of 43. Literally half, <laughs> half of what the critics uh, rated it. I'm in the camp of it's a 43 or below. Uh, what comes at night? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, no clear goal for anybody in the movie. There's no direction, in my opinion. The movie doesn't really go anywhere. It, And halfway through watching the movie, yeah, I realized, like, this is six people in a house, and they're never going to get out of this house. And it ends with them sitting at the kitchen table, not leaving, like, the house. They go outside, but they don't ever explore the world. And, uh, you know, I was telling Frank, and I, I told these guys, too, it's the type of movie where... They were building towards something, and then they're like, we, we've come, we've had it, the end. And I feel like you should have taken that moment, you should have taken that moment and moved it up to halfway through the movie and then explored beyond where they ended it on. They ended it on such a nothing moment. And ultimately, yeah, the movie doesn't go anywhere. Uh, I was really disappointed with it. I, it was getting such good reviews, but I was bummed out on it. Frank liked it. I didn't like it. You know what? Again, second podcast discussion of the week. Did you see it? What did you think? I, I Who do even, you side with? I hadn't even, because you wrote on, I saw you write yeah. on like Twitter, like, don't believe the marketing. I haven't yeah. seen marketing. I've never even heard of this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard about it or anything. Like, well, it's because like I follow so many, I follow so many like indie film like yeah. things. But like the marketing is touting it almost like a, like a supernatural monster movie. Like it's, it's not, it's like a bare bones, like. Honestly, it's a family drama. Like yeah. it's a fam It's not even like a horror film. It's a family drama. So I went in on, went into it expecting that, and like I liked it. And again, yeah. I see a lot of bullshit Sundance micro budget <laughs> movies. Yeah. There's a really cool one last year called The Invitation. Mm -hmm. And again, oh, okay. it's just like that. It's like The Invitation is about a dinner, like a dinner. Shit goes bad. Yeah. That's it. Super small scale. So I liked it. Yeah. Um, I went into this movie knowing nothing. The trailer is a slow push in on a red door. I don't know how much you can get out of that trailer. It's or, coming at night. Or what? Yeah, and it's called It Comes at Night. I thought maybe there'd be something behind that door. Was a little bit disappointed to find out there wasn't. Yeah. Uh, let us know. And on future podcasts, if you want to call it, have a point counterpoint discussion on it. We could talk more about it. But yeah, I was really disappointed with It Comes at Night. Big letdown. I felt like, you know, movies need to tell a story. <laughs> they need to have a goal. They need to be going somewhere, and I'm, I just can't handle these movies that sit around not doing anything. Well, like, I mean, I, that's a, it's a tough thing talking about because I don't want to, like, spoil it. Like, I want people to watch it. I really don't know if yeah. there's anything to spoil because so little happens like, in the movie. Like, for me, it's a, it's a film about survival. The father makes a choice, and then it's the result of that choice. Like, that, to me, is a story, and, like, it's bare, you know. Like, I, the way, when it ended in the theater, I thought, like, oh, that was really cool. I thought it ended, like, so balanced and perfect. And like, so I liked it, but it's like, I don't want to I thought it was into it. And again, your, your, very, your reading yeah. is, of it is totally fine. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep going. I don't know. I mean, if they had a bigger budget, they could have gone and explored more, but. I don't think they needed a bigger budget. I think they needed a better story. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of things that are interesting that are brought up as setups and they're never paid off. And uh, again, I won't spoil anything, but I could count five plot points in that story that could have gone somewhere and didn't go anywhere and you don't need a big budget you don't need explosions or more actors or machine guns or anything like that you just need to explore your own story and i don't think it's enough to say isn't that interesting isn't that interesting isn't that interesting <laughs> no make it interesting uh we talked about this the other day when you brought up like bringing bringing and the ending like when you look at a story and you try to bring the ending forward and then just go beyond, like have the ending happen in the middle yes. and keep going. 
and the king of the you know I, I think we get hung up too much on like budgets mm-hmm. and stuff uh, in terms of money spent you know uh, you know when I bring up James Cameron you could say oh well yeah he has a huge budget to do all these things but I honestly think he's just smart uh, regardless of the money he spends that guy his movies always push the ending into the middle of the movie <laughs> like you could end Titanic yeah. at the boat sinks the end, yeah. you know mm-hmm. and that's that's like barely that's halfway past, you know that's 65 percent through the movie and then you have all this other stuff and even even avatar you know you have a battle that could end the movie and it keeps going and going yeah. and going he's the king of that and i i feel like even if he had a 35 dollars to his name he would still do that yeah you know but i didn't like that and, and avatar especially i was so over it i was like in this in well like this a terminator fight. one terminator uh, one fucking know. rules because like okay they escape up to like the mountains yeah. and then like oh no it still keeps going yeah you know, like yeah. yeah, they could have just made, made an escape. And honestly, with It Comes at Night, uh, I'm not going to spoil, which I don't think there's anything to spoil, but the way that movie ends, there was more of that story to tell. And I don't know if they just decided not to tell it, but they could have kept on exploring and made it really interesting, but they just didn't. And uh, I was very disappointed with it. But it was shot very well. Yeah. It looks very good. It was even acted well. Just a weak story, which is, you know... That's the core of a movie. You're going to have an experience to get a story, to live somebody else's life vicariously by watching their story on the screen. Uh, And they just passed up so many good opportunities. Uh, I also saw this movie, which is not a very good movie, (laughs) The Bilko Experiment, which is... Yeah, see, I haven't heard of this either. You haven't heard of this? this It's uh, not being marketed around a lot, and I don't know if it's a huge budget. It's a medium budget movie, Mm. I would say, but it's kind of like Battle Royale set all within an (coughs) office building where the premise of this movie is a bunch of americans get hired to work for this company have you seen it no a bunch of americans get hired to work for this company in colombia and on it follows this girl on her first day and while she's there all of the colombian uh employees suddenly like get up and leave and they're like oh that's interesting then all like the doors start locking and all the windows start sealing up and this voice comes over the intercom which basically says you have half an hour to kill two people or else something bad will happen. And everybody thinks it's a joke, but at the end of the half hour, heads start exploding. And, wow. you know, they they realize like, oh, <laughs> this is kind of stupid. But they're like, oh, we agreed to have, because we're in Colombia, we agreed to have this company put a tracking device in the back of our skull. <laughs> oh. oh. Turns out that tracking device is a bomb. Oh, no. It sounds and, like a good story. And uh, and so they're all compelled to like, we don't we don't want to have our heads blown up. Let's just start killing each other. Uh, my review of the movie is it was interesting up until the point where they started killing each other, <laughs> and then it just kind of devolved into madness. But uh, you know I'm a big fan of battle royale, so if you like those kinds of movies, you might like it. It was written by James Gunn before he got yeah. famous. It was uh, when he was still married to Jenna Fisher mm. from The Office. He wrote this movie and he was slated to direct it. And then they got a divorce. And I was reading about it, and he said, like, you know, I don't really want to make this kind of movie when I'm going through a divorce. So it sat on the shelf for, like, ten years. And then he becomes one of the biggest directors in the world. And we're like, let's make that movie you never made. Uh, But he didn't want to do it, so they gave it to another director. Kind of an interesting story about the process of making it. Uh, Check it out for yourself, The Bilko Experiment. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, it's funny, because Ben Wheatley also did a movie called Free Fire, which is, like, same shit. Thirty Like, people have to shoot each other. So it's like... It's interesting how the waves go. Battle Royale comes out, and then, whatever, 10 years later, Hunger Games is a huge franchise, and now these small indie companies are like, oh, fuck, where's our, yeah. where's our Hunger Games Battle Royale thing? And Which now, is so unfair, it, yeah. because Battle Royale was banned in America <laughs> until Hunger Games came out, yeah. and it's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's such a better movie way than better. Hunger Games. I never saw Battle Royale until, like, a few years ago, and I was oh, sick, I, yeah. and I put it on, and it was great. It's legitimately so good. good. Um, I think we're running out of battery on the camera, so let's wrap this up very fast. Hey, I just How wanna, much longer do we have? Like, two, two minutes, minutes, one okay. minute. Uh, yeah, we put out a new episode of Friend Dimension on our Patreon. Check that out. If you are not a patron on our Patreon, you can get f- not free episodes. Almost free. A dollar, okay? Yeah. What What can you get for less than a dollar? Nothing. Go to Nothing. our Patreon, patreon.com slash mega64. Check it out. Yeah, uh, yeah, we played a little Bomberman and Puyo Puyo Tetris. Mm. We pl- It was a combo, so look for that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that's One a- minute. That's on our Patreon. Uh, I want to thank uh, I want to thank our sponsor, Kickapoo Joy Juice. Drinkkickapoo.com. You can get this wonderful drink. These guys have been great. 
delicious so good. to the last 30 seconds drop. left. Okay, there's a lot more ducks here than so there were good. before. Fuck, 20 seconds. Where are all these ducks? Wrap it okay. up. Uh, and also, we are going 10 to 10 seconds. We're oh, going fuck. to be at Anime Expo. Shit. We're going to be at an Anime Expo the whole weekend. Our panel is on July 4th at 3 p.m. in room LP1, so check that out, and we'll be at RTX, too. <laughs> Look up the info. It's on Mega64.com along with all the other Go to our archive channel, YouTube. Uh, it, it turn off? No, no, it's still going. Go to our Mega 64 archive channel. We announced everything we're bringing to the cons this summer. It's yeah. totally badass the stuff. The keynote is there. Posters, shirts, enamel pins, yeah. all kinds of crazy stuff. Check it out. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Go to a museum this summer. Read a book. Um, yeah, read a book. Paint a painting. I'm going to use the rest of our time. I went to Yosemite and oh. it was. Oh, oh God. Turn it off. So good. Damn, damn. There Fill was the so much water in the water.